So as you guys know, I'm always on the hunt for that next cool thing, potentially something to enter my setup, maybe a more optimal version of something that I'm already using. You've seen so many crazy keyboard videos on the channel, most of them mechanical, some of them crazy elaborate. Today, it's a little more low key. It's a little more low profile. This is a product from Logitech. It actually came out a while ago and somehow it slipped under my radar. Well, not today because I've been using a low profile keyboard recently ever since I've been standing at my desk. For some reason, the angle I'm gravitating towards low profile keyboards at the standing desk, it just fits better for me at the moment. Well, this might be the granddaddy, the godfather of low profile keyboards. No, there are not any mechanical key switches, but there are some crazy features inside of something that's almost, it's impossibly thin. It's called the Craft from Logitech. And you guys, I mean, I don't need to explain to you the Logitech love affair that's gone on for a while. This is my favorite mouse on planet Earth. You can go watch the video, configurability, beautiful wheels on it, ergonomics, and so forth. And recently, the Logitech app has improved so much for customizability, and that's where this comes in to join the party a little bit. The Craft has a configurable wheel on it. Now, you're looking at that thinking, so what, a wheel, I'm turning a dial, Microsoft did this a while back with their studio products. They had that wheel that you could use for creative input. What does that mean? Well, in certain applications, this wheel can actually control quite a bit and, and potentially increase your productivity level. It will work with Illustrator, InDesign, Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, Word, PowerPoint, and you can configure what this thing does, whether it's zoom functionality or the size of a brush. Beyond the creative input, the keyboard also has illumination, which is smart. So if you approach the keyboard, the backlight pops on. It works over Bluetooth or a unifying receiver, which is included in the box. Works with Windows, Mac, and mobile platforms. So it's got a lot going for it, but it has a price tag to match up as well, as you'd expect with a product in the premium category and with a name like Kraft. I mean, it just, it sounds expensive. Okay, so look, this is the keyboard now. I'm telling you, I mean, is that a look or what? Apple would call this space gray at the top and then the black deck below it. It's just, it's a nice color combo. It's very uh, Darth Vader. It's very, I don't know, it's futuristic. I like it. Look at the, it's impossibly thin. Can I, can we? This is a phone, that's a Galaxy S20 Ultra, I mean, it's a big phone, but just look at how slim the keyboard is. My goodness gracious. Is that important? I mean, not really. There is an aesthetic component though, where maybe if you approach your setup and you find it to be inspiring, if it's giving you positive feedback and you spend a lot of time there, then maybe there is some value associated with the appearance of the thing. But ultimately for me, like I said, the new angle I'm working a lot when I'm standing it just gives me a different approach. The height that I like, and therefore the low profile is just a little easier on my wrists at the moment, even though I'm giving up some key travel and, and probably a little bit of uh, typing accuracy. Also in the package, look at this nicely wheeled up, rolled up USB type C cable to charge this up. It does work wirelessly and can pair simultaneously to three separate devices with a simple click of the switch over here. Also in the package, as mentioned, you can connect via Bluetooth or you can use this 2.4 gigahertz little dongle. They call it a unifying receiver. What do we have on the unit? Well, the keycaps, you're probably gonna notice right away, they have a very strange shape to them. They are square keycaps, but on the inside, there's this divot, this little recess, which of course, that's the shape of your fingers. And so even though you're giving up some key travel here, I believe the hope is that you get some confidence back based on the shape, so the quick, Brown, Fox, and you can see I do not have proper typing techniques. So for me, it's kind of, it's even more important for me to have the confidence that I'm on the right key because I'm definitely not. See, the problem with a lot of low profile keyboards is since you're giving up so much travel, oftentimes you may, it's easier to accidentally click a key compared to a mechanical key switch where it's a more definitive press. Plus a lot of the mechanical keys are gonna have that natural sort of concave to them as well. So this is a, a, a kind of an in-between 
type of solution Logitech has come up with. You're gonna notice multimedia stuff up along the top, play pause, you have your volume controls, you have controls, manual controls for the backlight of the keyboard, brightness, and I like that they've put both Windows and Mac specific keys. All we've got, it's a very simple, it's a clean looking thing, which is good in my opinion, but that means all we have on the top is a type C connector and a power switch. We hit the power switch and there's a green LED indicator. So the Logitech option software has gotten so much better in recent years. In the past, I'd have issues with it. The new version, it, it really encourages you to customize your experience. So just like this, the application sees your various devices. Now it's important to know you don't have to do this. It, it would be a shame because you won't be taking advantage of the features here. You could just continue to use the keyboard the way it is without even installing the application. It'll work like any other Bluetooth keyboard. Once you get into the application and you see the creative control come to life, it starts to explain to you, okay, this crown is touch sensitive. So by default, this is doing volume as you can see, but that's really, that's some minor functionality. I, Trust me, I like a volume knob. Ooh, that's quite satisfying. Listen to this. The crown is contextual. The crown adapts to the app you're using and the tool selected. How cool is that? I can even change the default setting for it prior to tapping it. It can control just within the OS, volume, brightness, next, previous, a custom keystroke, horizontal scrolling, which, in a video editing application, for example, that's how I'll probably use it. The ability to navigate between tabs, as I said previously, switch between different desktops or pages, and of course, zoom. By tapping on it, because it is a physical button you can press, it can control, play, pause, mute, show desktop. I mean, it's so brightness up, that calculator, my goodness. So we'll switch it for now. How about we try brightness? Okay, cool. Boom, screen brightness, up and down. What if we wanted to control horizontal scrolling? Oh, interesting. When I changed to horizontal scrolling, it eliminated the clickiness. So now it's a smooth scroll, which is what you would want in a timeline, for example. Navigate between apps. And just like that, navigate between apps re-enables the clicky factor. So you can stop more easily on a specific spot. Switch between desktops. Boom! Now you'll see the key with the contextual nature is if I open up a bunch of tabs, I can just quickly, look at this, I mean, it's so convenient. Dude's going wild over a little wheel. But I'm telling you, there have been complete products around the idea of putting a wheel next to your keyboard so you have a secondary left-hand input to go with your mouse. This is, it's very interesting for creative applications. I'm telling you from personal experience, I've used wheels for that purpose in the past. Things like this guy have existed for years and they're very commonplace in editing suites all over the world. But the problem with these is you now have a secondary device somewhere on your desk, you need more space, it's a less clean look. For most people won't justify the space that it takes up on the desk and then maybe they won't use it. Of course, some people swear by it, everybody's gonna be a little bit different. But this achieves some of what that does in a package that really doesn't change the clean line. You end up with something that's very slick looking and you hardly even notice this wheel because of the way that it's integrated and you end up with a package. I mean, that's your package. It's nice, it's slick, and it just, it keeps your mind on the thing that you're working on, the location of it. Hopefully you don't even have to think about it. It just becomes second nature with the left hand. So I think, hence the name of the thing, it's gonna be targeted mostly at creative people, people using creative applications everybody's creative, but people using the illustrators and the photoshops and the video editing applications and so on. But really, I think anyone can benefit from it, even in an Excel spreadsheet or even within the OS or even within a browser. So I'm excited to use it on a daily. I like the design, impossibly thin. It is the Logitech Craft. You will pay for it. I will tell you what, you will pay for it. But that's typically the case with anything that sets itself at the top of the food chain.